Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today I am going to talk about this very special 22 target pistol, a high standard model HD military. If you're not into older firearms, you may not have heard of the High Standard Company. They were a fairly well-known gun maker from the 1920s until they dissolved in 1984. High Standard is probably best known for their various 22 caliber handguns. I have covered a couple of them in previous videos, the Double Action Derringer and the Sentinel Revolver. They're really unique designs and generally well-made. Most of their products were intended to be budget priced, but not cheap. They also made shotguns and centerfire revolvers and even a few rifles, but the one constant throughout the entire history of the company was their line of 22 semi-auto pistols like this one. Visually, it resembles another classic 22 pistol, the Colt Woodsman, but mechanically the two are very different. The origin of the high standard 22 actually goes back to the Fiala Arms Model 1920. That was a magazine fed single shot pistol. It had a moving slide very much like a semi-auto, but there was no recoil mechanism. So when you fired, the slide wouldn't move. You would have to manually retract it and then push it back forward again to load the next round. Ian at Forgotten Weapons has a great video on that gun if you want to see more. Fiala Arms went out of business within a few years and High Standard eventually acquired that design. They reworked it to make a blowback operated semi-automatic 22. They dubbed the Model B first sold in 1932. From then until about 1950, they produced roughly 15 to 20 different variants with model names consisting of one or two letters. From the 1950s onward, they made several dozen different 22 pistols with more marketing friendly model names like the Duramatic, the Olympic, and the Sport King. The later pistols are easy to identify by the big takedown button on the front of the frame that allows easy removal of the barrel. This model HD military was made in 1946. The H stands for hammer because it has an external hammer here as opposed to the internal hammer or striker found in most other high standards. During World War II, the US Armed Forces bought several thousand model Bs and HDs to use for training, which is why high standard later added the word military to the model name. They probably thought that would make it sell better. Some things never change. Also during the war years, the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, purchased 2,600 model HDs with integrally suppressed barrels. Over the following decades, these guns were shared among different government organizations for various clandestine activities. One suppressed high standard was famously found in the cockpit of the U-2 spy plane that was shot down over the Soviet Union in 1960. Today, it's supposedly sitting in a museum in Moscow. As late as the year 2000, the Marines First Force Recon Company still had at least 10 of the suppressed high standards sitting in their armory. Now this model HD military is obviously not integrally suppressed. It's got a 6.7 inch heavy target style barrel. They were also available with four and a half inch barrels. HD military is among the most common high standard 22s they're not all that special from a collector standpoint. You can get one like this in decent shape for uh, maybe six to 800 bucks. But this particular gun is special because it belonged to my grandfather. He was not much of a gun enthusiast, so this is the only gun of his that we have in the family. He didn't shoot it a whole lot as far as I know. My dad thinks he probably bought it new in the 1940s. And for the next few decades, it mostly sat in a sock drawer. My dad and I took this gun to the range several times over the years, but we never had much luck getting it to run very well. We tried every type of ammo we could find. Uh, a while back, we even tracked down an extra magazine for it at a gun show, but it would never feed more than a couple of rounds in a row without a malfunction. So it's just kind of sat idle for about the last 10 years until now. But before I tell you that story, let's take a closer look at what we have here. It's got a heel style release for the 10 round single stack magazine. 
like most target style 22s, it is single action only. The flat face serrated trigger has a crisp break at about four and a half pounds. There is a manual safety lever here on the left side of the frame. It has a very short travel. It almost feels like it isn't doing anything at first, but it does disable the trigger. The slide stop is in an unusual position here on the right side of the frame. It's a little too stiff to really use it as a slide release, so it's best to just pull the slide back to load your first round. In theory, the slide will lock open on an empty magazine, but that doesn't always happen when you're actually shooting it. The sights are pretty good for a pistol from this era. Until about the 1970s, most military and defense style handguns had miserable little tiny excuses for sights, but target style handguns did have decent sights most of the time. The rear notch could stand to be a little deeper, but it's plenty wide enough and so is the front sight blade. The rear sight is also adjustable for windage and elevation. The windage adjustment involves this screw here above the firing pin, as well as a second screw on the bottom of the slide. I'm not sure if you can see that down there. They're both pretty tight and I'm not gonna mess with them because apparently this whole rear sight assembly is a massive pain to fix if it gets damaged. The elevation adjustment is this little pin here on the side. You can move that and it causes the rear sight to pivot forward and back to change its height. Uh, that's also pretty stiff on this gun and apparently these pins are prone to breaking off, so I'm not messing with that either. Mechanically, it seems like the rear sight is a weak point of this model. I've read that it was common for serious target shooters to replace it with an aftermarket sight. Fortunately, this gun hits close enough to point of aim with the sight as is, so I'm not gonna try to adjust them. There's a little quirk to loading the magazines. The manual cautions you not to force the rounds through the feed lips like that. Instead, you're supposed to pull down on the follower and insert the head of the cartridge first so it goes under the feed lips like that. So how did I get this thing running again? Well, at some point it occurred to me that like a lot of old guns, it probably just needed a new recoil spring. And last week, I finally got around to buying a replacement. It turns out the old spring wasn't exactly worn out because the gun hadn't been fired much, but it was very badly damaged from improperly field stripping the gun. On the Model HD, as well as a lot of the other early high standards, there is a very important step that you cannot skip when taking apart the gun for cleaning. So first, you pull the slide back, and then you push down on this little button on the top. That pushes down a leaf spring that's inside the slide, and that captures the recoil spring. So see, the recoil spring's not doing anything anymore. Then you just push the slide forward, rotate down the takedown lever, and the slide comes right off the back. And now if you look inside the bottom of the slide, here is the end of the recoil rod, and on the other end there is a plug that is pinned in place. You can't see the recoil spring because it's captured inside the slide. If you somehow manage to get the slide off without first capturing the recoil spring, then you will mangle the spring, and that's what happened to this gun. But now it's got a new spring, and for the first time in many years, it works beautifully. I've always loved the looks of this gun. It's got that retro sci-fi contour, but with the classic wood grips and the polished blued finish that you can't really get on any new gun anymore. It's at least as accurate as any other 22 that I've owned. And now that it works, it is super fun to shoot. It's the perfect heirloom gun that will hopefully entertain generations of bakers in the future. I hope you guys have enjoyed learning about this gun with me. If you want to throw some support our way, just remember the next time you need ammo, get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.